Today we are driving to Valdez. We'll spend the night somewhere along the Glen Highway, surrounded by mountains. Once we get to Valdez, we'll visit a salmon hatchery, Worthington Glacier, Bridal Veil vale and Horsetail Falls, an old railroad tunnel, the original town site, and we'll just wander the streets. We might even find a brewery. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV wherever I want to be. Because I'm free in my RV. Greetings from Anchorage, Alaska, the largest city in the state. We're going to get on the Glen Highway, Alaska 1, and then on the Richardson Highway, going south, spending the night somewhere halfway along the way. It is a good five and a half to six hours in total. We don't have very ambitious plans for Valdez. At this point, we've spent five and a half weeks in Alaska, and we've seen so much that we're mentally ready to start wrapping up our time here. Everybody has said Valdez is not to be missed, so we're gonna spend two nights there, get a feel for the town, and then we'll go back north and try to do the rest of the Denali Highway, the part that we didn't do at the beginning of the month. And then exit the 49th state through the top of the world. There's a town called Chicken. For now, we're just gonna drive east here along the north shore of the Matanuska River with these great views of the Chugash Mountains. Let's stop real quick. I believe this is the same pullout where we stopped on our way to Matanuska Glacier a little over two weeks ago, with these great views of the Matanuska River from this higher perspective and the mountains. This is exactly the same route we took with Great Land Adventures to Matanuska Glacier, but from the van we couldn't really see the view to the front, which, by the way, is spectacular. There it is, Matanuska Glacier. Let's see if we can stop to get a better view. Here's the glacier access road, so from now on, everything will be new. Let's stop for one last view. Look at all those people down there. 
That might be that staging area where you put on your ice cleats in order to walk on the ice. I don't see the bridge, but who knows? Yes, that looks like the area we explored. Tell you what, we had a late start and we're kind of tired, so we're gonna start looking for a pullout where we can potentially spend the night. There, if we could find an empty pullout just like that one, it would be perfect. This is it. We're home, baby. We're home. Well, this is what I would call a room with a view. We're going to cook us some dinner, and if no one objects, we're going to stay here. Well, this may well be where we're gonna call it today. We'll see. Those are some massive mountains in the distance, and apparently Valdez is right behind them. In fact, we're only about 60 miles from Valdez as the crow flies, but we're gonna have to drive around over three hours in order to get there. Well, tomorrow we're heading that way. Alaska never ceases to amaze me with all these majestic mountains. I'm going to make one of our new favorites, butter chicken. Some thighs for me, some breasts for Illy. We're going to put some Santa Maria style seasoning on it. One of our new favorites as well. A little extra garlic seasoning extra salt and pepper. Let's turn all our pieces here now that they've browned a little and we'll add some onions as well. Cooking wine. A little bit of water because I ran out of cooking wine. We'll infuse it with some more garlic and we'll let it cook for at least 30 to 40 minutes until the wine and the water evaporate. The sauce still needs to reduce a little more, but we're hungry, so we're gonna start. Bon appetit. Oh, that chicken came out fabulous. And um, I think this is where we're gonna call it. I mean, take a look at that view. And um, as I've been told here in Alaska, unless, you know, it says that obviously, you know, no camping, you're pretty much allowed to overnight, in, you know, everywhere on the side of the road. We're here on the side of uh, Alaska Highway 1, of course. And, uh, yeah, we're gonna do it. We'll, we'll leave tomorrow morning on our way to, to Valdez, but I mean, just being able to, to boondock with this view right next to us is certainly a treat. <laughs> A 
as you may have noticed, it never got completely dark last night. Well, good morning. After so many weeks, it is the return of the cockpit cam. And uh, yeah, my original mount broke and now I just realized I had an extra uh, GoPro branded uh, suction cup mount here, so. So I can talk to you guys while I, while I drive. In any case, this was a great uh, overnight uh, stop here at this uh, pullout. It's one of many, many pullouts on all these uh, Alaskan highways. And, uh, you know, after it got later, you know, it, it was pretty quiet. And as you saw on that time lapse I did last night, it's still not getting dark enough. I mean, we could barely see any stars, let alone like northern lights. So I don't think we're going to be able to see northern lights on this trip. Now um, we're going to stop at Glen Allen to put gas. And then our next stop is uh, Valdez, Alaska. Our last major stop in Alaska. We're kind of heading back. Heading back to the lower 48. And here we go, it was just a matter of time before we killed the bug. We are now in Glen Allen. Let's refuel and keep on going. Here we are, the hub of Alaska. This is right at the junction with the Richardson Highway. Valdez, 115 miles. That huge mountain, probably Mount Drum, part of Wrangell St. Elias National Park which happens to be the largest national park in the nation. Here's a pullout, so let's check out the view. Quick break here on the side of the road. We have some pretty prominent mountains here. Could that possibly be Mount Drum? More research. So I'll go into this. And then next to it, Another one. There's another one here. Mount Blackburn. Reaching 16390. I believe we're about to hit the mountains once again, going down to Valdez. And I just realized something. This segment of the Richardson Highway, and for a few miles now it's felt that way even on the, on the Alaska Highway 1. It kind of feels like we're back in the last frontier. You know, there are frost heaps, potholes, and the gas stations are again far in between. So. I kinda like it. <laughs> oh no, construction ahead.
this road is destroyed. Look at that glacier. That's gotta be Worthington Glacier, right? All right, let's take a break. Oh yeah, perfect spot for a bathroom break, what can I say? And here on this side, we have this waterfall. I just noticed it. We're almost at the top, Thompson Pass. This is it. Thompson Pass, elevation 2,678 feet above sea level. Now entering Keystone Canyon, and we're probably going to come back here tomorrow without the trailer because there are several waterfalls and other points of interest. Here on the left we have Bridal Veil Falls. Let's stop really quick just in case we don't get to come back. Well, there it is, Bridal Veil Falls. Beautiful waterfall. I heard that in winter the falls freeze into a towering column of ice. That's gotta be a sight to behold. We've got company now. Let's continue. Actually, the next waterfall is right here. We could have walked. This one is called Horsetail Falls. Very popular spot. So many waterfalls here on Keystone Canyon. Hey, bunch of RVs parked down there. I wonder what that is. It didn't show on the map as an official campground. We are, we finally made it to Valdez. We're going to be staying at the Valdez RV park, which I believe is right here on the left. Here's the welcoming committee. Yeah, it's a, it's a bear, it looks like a black bear. Cool. Well, here we are, Valdez RV Park, which is actually walking distance to downtown, so yeah, let's go get something to eat. Beautiful setting, mountains surrounding us in all directions. They've got a food truck right here at the entrance of the park.
very cool to see all these old boats here at the harbor. Potato here looks nice, but we're looking for a place that comes highly recommended, called the Fat Mermaid. Here we are, the Fat Mermaid, and I'm sure the food here is amazing, but we could never find out. Well, we waited for a whole 10 minutes and there's seems to be no service here, so we're gonna go somewhere else. Yeah, it turns out there's a brewery in town. Oh yeah, very nice. There's a food truck called Poor Betty's, super friendly service, very good beer and ambience here at Valdez Brewing. And the fried halibut basket is surprisingly good. Oh, that was really good. Good IPAs. Good halibut. Maybe our penultimate halibut in Alaska. Now yeah, we're gonna go to the RV and take a break. And maybe later we'll, we'll walk around town a little bit. At least we got good service here. Came to the RV to take a break. And now we're going to explore a little more. Now that's a really cool looking boat. I love all these old ones that kind of remind me of Popeye's boat. I mean, it doesn't really look like it, but it's kind of the shape, I guess. We were going to do the Dock Point Trail, which seems to be an easy one mile loop, but we changed our minds. We're actually gonna go to the other side of town instead, and maybe do the Civic Center Overlook Trail. We were so tempted to take another glacier and wildlife cruise from here, but tell you what, we've done plenty of that over the past few weeks, so we're going to save it for another time. Argentina to Alaska, now that's quite an adventure. This is the Civic Center Overlook Trail. Okay, here we go. This is the Civic Center on the right. Uh, we're here. This is the, the Overlook Trail, so we're gonna do this. There are some stairs here and some other stairs here. And I guess this is the highest point, Civil Center Hill. So let's do it. And be very aware. I believe that facility on the other side of the bay is the southern terminus of the Alieska pipeline, which comes all the way from Prudhoe Bay. So now we've visited both ends of the pipeline. And here's looking north. Now going down the stairs on the other end of the trail. Over the trail. And that's the convention center. I wonder what this is. They have a smoker. Must be another restaurant. Obviously not open today. A dance hall. It is Tess's dance hall. Check it out, we're on Brewery Row. Growler Bay Brewing to the left. Here's Growler Bay Brewing, but it doesn't seem to be open. I mean, you would think, on a Thursday, maybe it only opens on weekends. On the other hand, Valdez Brewing is open and happening, but we're gonna save some for tomorrow. Good morning! We decided to skip breakfast and our first meal of the day is going to be a one-pot meal. Beef stew. We bought this at Fred Meyer in Anchorage. Let's brown the meat a little. Salt. Pepper. I'm going to add some bone broth and we're going to boil this for at least an hour. 
After it's done boiling, we're gonna add some mushrooms. We're gonna chop an onion. Do the same to a red pepper. Now the garlic. Smoked paprika. Cumin. Oregano. Cayenne pepper. Mm, it needs a little more salt. Tell you what, let's make it healthy. For a one pot meal, this looks really good, so let's dig in. Bon appetit! Well, there's supposed to be this really cool salmon hatchery in town, so let's go check it out. It's on the other side of Valdez Bay. Bay. I think this is it. I wonder where we might be able to park. By the way, this is called the Solomon Gulch Hatchery, built in 1981, harvesting pink and coho salmon. Yep, there's parking here. All right, let's go see some wildlife. Everybody wants to eat some salmon. There they are. Look at all the salmon. Thousands of them. Let me tell you, these guys have it easy. All you have to do is hang out here, open your mouth, and the salmon come to you. It is their instinct to procreate that sometimes takes them to their demise. Oh, I don't think it is this way. I think you're going the wrong way. Well, nobody ever called salmon smart. It is fascinating to see nature interacting with man-made things like this dam. I guess as long as there is fresh water coming, they are going that way. And it is a feast for the seagulls and the sea lions. This is almost as good as the bears in Brook Falls. And we didn't have to pay an inordinate amount of money to get on a float plane and visit a remote waterfall. Well, it is a totally different experience, of course. But this one is just a 15-minute drive from town. Bam! Swallowed it in one gulp. It looks like we came exactly at the perfect moment because it's, it's getting more and more crowded now. And uh, very cool, very cool to see, you know, nature doing its thing, you know? Almost as cool as seeing the bears uh, a couple of days ago at, at Brooks Falls. This was, of course, free. Alright. There's supposed to be a self-guided tour, so we might do that. And that's Valdez on the other side. Came down to the beach, and there are some anglers fishing as well. Here's the dam from the top of the bridge. A slightly different view. We got some more sea lions back there. All right, visitor pathway. Yeah. 
During your tour, you will find many areas for you in the salmon in Solomon Gulch Creek. I guess the tanks are not in use this time of the year. It's dirt run to fresh water, huh? I guess they have a somewhat symbiotic relationship. That was really cool. Now let's check out the waterfall in Solomon Gulch Creek. Let's keep going. Well, this may have been the highlight of Valdez so far. Oh, we need us a couple of bear there, you know, into the mix. And uh, <laughs> it's very cool to see nature at work. Let's put it that way, in the circle of life. Who eats the birds though? In any case, we're going to another uh, historic site here. It's called Old Valdez. And what happened, uh, the town of Valdez, there was a huge earthquake that uh, destroyed the town. There was a tsunami and everything. So um, so they had to relocate the town a couple of miles farther west where it is right now. But the remains of the old town are still there. So that's where we're going next. Here's the original Valdez town site. Let's explore a little bit. They have some interpretive signs with some historic facts about the original town. That's how it would have looked in 1955. Hmm, it looks like boondocking may be allowed here at the location of the original post office. Not much remains, so we must use our imagination. It didn't last very long. As I said, not much remains of the old town of Valdez. Just a few foundations, some wooden pylons here. Hmm, I wonder what that was. Came back to the RV to take a break. And now that we have much better weather, let's explore a little more. There's one more thing we want to see at Keystone Canyon. And uh, remember that area where we saw a bunch of RVs parked by the river? Let's find out what that is all about. It is not marked at all on Google Maps, or Apple Maps, or Bing Maps, or any of the apps we use. So I don't know. It is Alaska, so I guess you're allowed to camp as long as it is not private property or it says so otherwise. This is it, right here, right next to the Valdez Glacier Stream. Yep, all these people are definitely boondocking here. Hey, maybe next time we come we'll stay here. 
it almost looks like a mini quartzite with much better views, especially now with this great weather. All right, we've seen enough. Let's turn around. Let's go back to Keystone Canyon. Here we have Horsetail and Bridal Veil Falls, but we're going a little farther down the road. As we're about to cross the low river, here's what we came to see. The remnants of an old unfinished railroad tunnel. Well, here we have a railroad tunnel from 1906. Well, check that out. I mean, it's, it's a magnificent canyon. Here we have some people doing some rock climbing. Lots of contemporary pictographs. Check this you, like, place out. Like, to the left, uh, like, so take There's your of here. And then further right of that, down, like back in there. And then Whoa. you can get the tool, you can't get the zip in there, but you can get that. Uh, yeah, that wasn't exactly what I meant. Yeah, I think this is as far as I'm going to go. Yeah, the tunnel is a little bit sketchy, so I'm just going to use the zoom. Besides, I wasn't expecting a hike, so I didn't bring my hiking shoes. That was very cool. It would be interesting to see the opening on the other side, but we're going to continue. Let's go to Worthington Glacier. Hmm, scenic overlook. Let's stop. Amazing mountains. Now that we can see them, thanks to this beautiful weather. We're back at Thompson Pass. And here we are. I haven't seen any information anywhere about how long is the trail, but we're gonna see if at least we can get a, a view of the glacier and the waterfall next to it, which is actually quite scenic. In reality, from this vantage point, we can only see the bottom tip of the glacier. I mean, still very scenic. Well, I guess this is it. I'm kind of disappointed. <laughs> I guess this one is really receding, huh? That's all you can see. Mm -hmm. 
Got a lake and the glacier. Just another view of the waterfall, the glacier, and the glacial lake here. That was certainly worth a short hike. For my $5, I would have expected a trail map, but it is still worth it. Let's go to the scenic viewpoint on the side of the road where we stopped on the way to Valdez. It is arguably a much better view. And it is. The other day, I didn't even notice the waterfall. It is definitely much larger than what you can see from the trail. Let's go back to the pass. What an amazing view everywhere you look. And with that, let's go back down to Valdez and maybe get something to eat. Actually, this would make a great boondocking spot. We decided to stop by Bridal Veil Falls one more time now that the weather is on our side. And it does make a difference when the weather is good. And we're back at the RV park. Yeah, this place is really filling up. Check it out. It's like a little Japanese RV. Check this out. Maybe they can make a bonfire later. Or a pallet fire. We're gonna walk into town. town is definitely livelier today. Look at the line at the nut shop. Here we have some other Pan American Highway travelers. Tell you what, we're going to the Wheelhouse Bar and Restaurant. The bar with a view. And good IPA. There comes the Lulu Bell, which is the most recommended wildlife and glacier tour here in Valdez. And in hindsight, we probably should have done it. 
but at this point we've done so much in the 49th state that we kind of wanted to save some for next time, for a future visit. I mean, you know we're coming back, right? Someday. These come all the way from Mexico, and those from Argentina. Some of those mountains weren't there before, right? Or were they? RV park has really filled up now that it is the weekend. This is the view from the RV park. Someone started a fire and we've got a bald eagle here. Like an omen of good luck, bidding us farewell on our upcoming journey back to the contiguous United States. Once again, last night did not get completely dark. You know what that means? No Aurora Borealis. On the next one, I think it's going to be more about the journey than the destination. We begin to drive back home, although we're taking the long way over the top of the world. We're going to a town called Ptarmigan. Nah, not really, it is just called chicken. And then we say goodbye to Alaska temporarily. This is, however, the beginning of the end. But it is going to be a long end. Lots of adventures still to come. Until then, thank you so much for watching. And see you on the road. Riding in my arms